version, there's a warrior caste that tends to have the horns, and they're very bulky, very aggressive. Uh, you wouldn't want to meet one of them. Would they be the ones, though, to lead the pack? Or the other ones? They would be what you call an advance guard. They'd be the ones you'd send out uh, when you're invading a planet or an area. Um, and they're very volatile. And, uh, you know, there's a difference um, in sometimes how they use human appearance because the shapeshifters can physically change to human form. However, there are reptilians that are not, of course, able to do that because they're purebred. They don't have human genetics. What they sometimes have is a device around their waist that creates a holographic image around them that makes them appear human. But they're not shape-shifting. It's just a holographic image that's projected around them. Well, that could be, uh, I guess, altered or... Uh, it could be breached, right? If somebody tried to touch them or something, would you know? It'd be like going through a hologram. Yes, and I did witness that in um, Montauk Project because there were reptilians occasionally there, but these were not shapeshifters. These were real, hundred percent reptilians, and in order to not terrify a lot of the people, they would sometimes use this holographic image around them. Do you be do, do you believe that the the Illuminati the power brokers on this planet, the very wealthy families, that they could be from this reptilian strain? They are. In fact, mm -hmm. the Illuminati are, are made up of 13 ruling families, and all of them can trace their ancestry to the hybridization program that really went back to the Sumerian times. So they're human beings, but they have reptilian a very DNA. high percentage of reptilian genetics, yes. Amazing. Are, are they shapeshifters, or, the, the, or they actually look this way? Some are. Not all of them are shapeshifters. It depends on the exact 50-50 split of genetics. So there are some who do not shapeshift, but still are uh, in the elite group. And the reason they call themselves blue bloods is because reptilian blood has a very high copper content, and when copper oxidizes, it looks like a blue-green color. Mm -hmm. And that is why they've been called blue bloods over the centuries. You know, just last week I had a story of a guy who had uh, uh, green blood in his system. Oh, yeah, that was in Vancouver. Yeah, I mean, could he be? Well, you see, here's what's happening now. They're very methodically releasing information about this to the public. And this is one of the stories. Now, the cover story to that was the man had some kind of disease where his blood would not accept oxygen. Right, right, exactly. Well, he well, hello, if that was the case, he'd be dead. He wouldn't be operating on him because he would have no oxygen. The cells would have died. So, of course, that was just a cover story. You know, if he had blink green blood, and, of course, in the article that they mentioned, the Canadian Free Press, <laughs> they compared him to Spock on Star Trek. So there's, again, the alien connection that the m conventional media is giving out to the public. We're in a period of time now where they are disseminating information about the alien presence on the Earth, but they're doing it in such a way that people can accept. They're not going to tell the absolute truth about who the reptilians are and what's going on. The they're going... To Go, create, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They're going to create a staged alien invasion. And when that happens, they're going to have a savior race come and help us who will turn out to be the reptilians. And then, of course, the reptilians will announce that they were the colonists on the earth and they're part of us and we're part of them. And uh, it becomes uh, an integrated process then. How then bizarre. My gosh, Stuart, that's going to change the entire complexity of this planet. Well, that's correct. And that's kind of what I was leading to before about the, the uh, Illuminati agenda or the hybrid agenda, is that they're trying to create their own galactic empire using the Earth as a home base, which is a bit contrary to what the reptilian race wanted originally. Are, are these the ones that want the population reduced to 500 million? Well, see, I don't agree with that story because what I know is that they're in the process of creating Earth-like uh, environments in the moons of Jupiter and Saturn 
to move the population. They're not going to, they didn't spend millennia of time creating this vast slave race to destroy it. They're going to use it in wherever they see fit. Are you saying they're going to cattle cow humans, take them on craft, much like that To Serve Man Twilight Zone show where they ate them, they cooked them. Right. But basically to put them on craft and take them to other planets and and, uh, celestial objects? Well, that's that's bottom lining it, but yes, that's ultimately what will be happening. When will this occur? Well, I feel that will occur sometime after 2010. Um, and we're already getting prepared for it. They're already talking about finding Earth-like planets out in other solar systems. They're already talking about various objects in space that are unknown and strange. They're preparing the population for the uh, assimilation into a galactic uh, mindset. What an incredible possibility, Stuart. Well, how, I- do we, how do we fight it? Well, that's just it, and that's why I do the work that I do. I consider it an obligation because of the things I participated in in the Montauk Project. I'm not a reptilian, am I? We all have reptilian DNA. All humans on this planet have reptilian DNA. It's a question of percentages. Most humans have between 10 and 15 percent uh, reptilian DNA. That's why we have a lymphatic uh, reptilian uh, system. We have skin that wrinkles and peels. We have a lot of reptilian characteristics in our bodies, and that comes from that hybridization that occurred eons ago. So, yes, we're all part reptilian. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can see that in the gestation of, of a person. In the if, the womb. if they were confused as gods, that does not negate... A god, right? Correct. There is God. There is a God mind. It permeates all things. Nothing can exist without it. And when we look at DNA, we see that 97% of all DNA, and it doesn't matter if you're a human, an elephant, an alien, or a plant, science calls it junk DNA. Stuart, when we come back, let's talk a little bit more about, you say, the staged alien invasion, and then time travel how quickly this night goes. And the next hour, we'll open up the phone lines and we'll give you an opportunity to talk with Stuart Swordlow. I'm George Norrie. This is Coast to Coast AM. Incredible guest tonight, Stuart Swordlow. Great stories. The staged alien invasion is next on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast with Stuart Swordlow. Stuart, let's talk about this staged alien invasion. This fascinates me. So uh, tell me how it could occur and what the motive is behind it. You know, for the last uh, century, in order to uh, create uh, control over people, the best way is to instill fear. And so we've seen this with World War II, the fear of the Nazis, then the Cold War, and now we have the terrorist fear. Everyone's afraid and trying to unite against that. Some of the fear could be real, but maybe magnified. Yes, but of course the terrorists are a creation of the New World Order and would not exist on their own. Very possible. Yeah. Uh, there's no way that they could have possible, uh, well, it's a little long story, but so the next thing is to create a fear beyond this planet that would cr- force the planet to unite under one world government. In other words, create the situation so the solution can be imposed. If we are told that we are being attacked by an unknown alien civilization with amazing weapons, imagine the fear and terror that would pervade the Earth. Everybody would band together. Correct, and demand that the countries of the Earth do something together to stop this threat. Yes. And of course, then we would have a new world order government, a singular government that controls the planet, which we already have anyway, but now would be officially wanted by the people. That would be a public. And then we would have this imaginary battle. They have something called Blue Beam Project. And Blue Beam Project is holographic images that are projected into the atmosphere and can look like anything. It can look like a a religious figure. It can look like a UFO fleet. It could look like missiles. They've been targeting and practicing with this since the early 1960s when they actually tested it Mm. over Havana Harbor when a U.S. submarine uh, projected the image of the Virgin Mary over Havana and was seen by all the people in the evening streets. 
And you can shut it off anytime you want. It just disappears, right? Absolutely. They've been testing it recently in various places of the earth, all these meteor falls. For example, uh, Sydney Airport a few months ago reported a meteor on their radar, and then people saw this, this meteor come and actually hit the ground and explode. And when the uh, emergency services went to the area, there was absolutely nothing there because it was a holographic image that they were testing. And we've seen this in various places around the 